So I just saw a picture. I want to see. What's the thing this morning? I was this morning that it said to show the first Batmobile that's going to be in a new Matt Reeves Batman movie. And I, at first I wasn't sure because it was like it looked it looked simple. It looked like I was like, nah, that looks like just looks like a armored muscle car. And then when I realized it was real, I was like, and I, I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I'll take that. I was kind of, it made me kind of like slightly excited from now for Batman because it, it doesn't it make, I guess it would make sense, you know, think about it. Uh, armored muscle car uh, would be, uh, two represents two things. It would represent money and inexperience. Because think about it, if you think about it, uh, man, you know, he's going to go stop some robbers or something. You know, Robert Bain, they're, they're in there stealing stuff, all you hear. You're like, oh, snap, it's Batman. You will hear that brother coming down like two blocks. That's how loud those muscle cars can get. And, and if you know anything about Batman, he's all about stealth and being quiet. So, like, him rolling up in a muscle car just, you know, wouldn't make sense. Even though it, 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 it fits for the fact that it's his second year. Uh, is it really cool? Yeah, 100%. I think it's awesome that he's driving that. Is it impractical for who he is? Very much. But it's still very cool. Yeah, it's still cool. Everybody, this is the House of Dark. Welcome to a new episode of Real Talk. I, 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 we're gonna go. We're gonna go different in this one. I mean, not too different because it's, it's still in my house of nerd that we do, but it's more game related. I mean, we talked about Sonic the Hedgehog, which was a game, but it was a video game to movie adaptation. But this is more circled around a game, game, and a game that's coming out in like a little, little over a month. April tenth is the release date. And it's Final Fantasy VII, the remake. Now, we're not gonna talk about the remake. That's, we're gonna do that, that's a separate episode, especially for you know the, what came out. I'm gonna focus on, for those who can't see it, the original. Yes, this is an original guide from 1997 of Final Fantasy VII, the original. This is what the remake's based off of, or it's a reimagining or something like that. So, um, now, so for those, before I, you know, you know, for those who don't know, I played Final Fantasy VII when it first came out in America. You know, I beat it and everything, and it was it was a good experience because it was you know it was my first JRPG. Actually, it was my first RPG ever, ever in my entire life. You know, that was like one of the first, the second. I want to say it's either the first or second game I bought when I first bought my PlayStation One at like 16 years old. Uh, I'm 16, yeah, and uh, yeah, it was one of my first games I bought. If not, it was like too many. I think it was the first one that came in, but I think it came with it. And then I think literally, I, I want to say, yeah, Final Fantasy VII was like the next thing I got because people were talking really hard about it. I was like, all right, let me give, let me give it a shot. It looks cool, and uh, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the character. I think I like you know. I think you know Tifa is life. You know what I mean? I love Tifa. That cloud, the whole thing with the bus, certain clouds, really cool. And when I played, I remember playing it and played through it, and I my experience of fighting all the different types of monsters and and I was I was genuinely I'm gonna say this right now I was genuinely afraid to fight any of the weapons <laughs> like, you know what I mean when, like this is something I've never experienced in my life I've played I've played games before but it was like Final Fantasy 7 was like my first ever l real like RPG with I felt like there was something big at stake here you know what I mean and uh, to you know, I played and you know, I like I fought the you know which weapon was it? Di was it diamond? It's the one that shows up you know with the Junon cannon and stuff like that, and, and we think Rufus died. But and, and so uh, for those who didn't see, uh, that are listening to my podcast, I put quotations up. But uh, other than that, I didn't like when I found out there was other weapons that existed. I like I avoided them like the play because I was afraid, it's genuinely afraid. So I and I beat the game and I felt very proud of it. Like the fight I had was, you know, at the end with Genova and then Sephiroth. You know, I was playing till like two in the morning because I was like I died like a bunch of times and I was like freaking out every time he did Supernova. And I was hoping out my regens were popped. I mean, I I hope I did. I, there was a strategy. I hope I did it well. I did it right and I did in the beating. I was very proud of myself. It was like the first ever like committed. I went. That was my first blind run of Final Fantasy VII, and and uh, and I didn't. And at the time, I didn't have this. I didn't have the guide. So it was definitely an experience. And uh, and I was very proud of myself. 
uh, until my brother played it. <laughs> This is why, this is why, because my brother, my brother's a little more methodical than I, I was, especially at that time. He, and this is like when I first realized that games can have more than what they just tell you, you know, what they show you. There's more to it. Uh, and so I think he had the guide first. Or somehow, because for, for those don't understand, this was like big deal for my brother to know all this information. Because nowadays, because of the Google and forums and Reddit and YouTube videos and stuff like that, you can go online. You can just Google, you know, Final Fantasy VII 100% walkthrough, and it will give you every piece of information you need right here, right there. This is how you do it. This is the best way. This is how you beat the monsters. This is how you beat the weapons. This is how you get all the weapons and the, and, and everything. You know what I mean? And, but that, you know, at the time in 1990, you know, 97, that didn't exist. So to, uh, for my brother to have all this, now, I don't know if it was because it's people he knew. I don't remember if he got, if he, he was the first to get the guide. I mean, this thing is, if you can look at this, this is ratty. This is, it's old. It's, 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 it's seen some things, but it's, it's been in my box and sat there for years. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, I watched him play it and blew my mind that like i think because at the time when i played i got up to like 40 or 50 and so when i walk in my brother's like 60 also in 70 then he like maxes out at 99 i didn't know you can crit at 999 i was like losing my mind my brother did everything he did everything i learned i, I was like what is that what summon is that that's knights of the round what's knights of the round wait why do you keep picking item and canceling what's the w item like like technique i'm like what, what do you mean w item technique i was like blown away by all the stuff my brother did and i watched him play that game and i and i, and I literally experienced and I, like i didn't know who vincent was because he found vincent i don't know how he knew vincent was there i didn't even know he existed um I didn't know you can get Yuffie at the time because I think she stole my materia or she did something. She stole something from me. It was, it's a one scene where you try to talk to her and she dips. And no, you don't get Yuffie if you go to Wutai. Did I get Yuffie? I don't know. I don't remember. But like there was like extra stuff I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know anything about like said final weapons, final. I thought I thought like everyone's final limit break you just earned. And because I didn't get them all, it's because I wasn't at max level. I just found out I didn't realize there was like steps and things you do. There are side quests and extra stuff and people you can talk to and quadra magic and all these other jams. I'm like, what? So it was like it was amazing to me to watch it play through somebody else's, you know, eyes. And I literally had a completely different experience because my brother's party was different. He had, like, I had, I had, I had the basics. I had Tifa, I had Cloud, and I think I had Barrett. My brother had Sid, Kate Sith, and Vincent. Those were that was his party. At the and by the end of the game, that's the party he took in to beat. Uh, I think that's who he used Sid, Kate Sith, and Vincent. Because I think no, maybe you can't take. Yeah, I could have sworn because I was like, I know for sure he loved Vincent. Vincent was one of his favorite characters, and then he like he was really big on Kate Sith because of some of his limit breaks and manipulate because of the way you can do with manipulate. And my brother loved my brother. He was so good at the game. It like it almost at the time. Like I look back at it now, I was like, man, he would he would be better at it than I was. And like when he like and I thought it was weird. Like he could play. I'm like oh, whatever. I already beat it. Sure. Then also when I watched him do it. It was like a completely different experience, and I was blown away by all the stuff he learned, and like and I saw when he played it. So shout out to my brother for you know opening my eyes to the like like I said to the realization that games can give you more than they show. Like side quest, that was like the first game that was to to me for me to introduce side quest, and 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 extra things you can do and now i'm a big side quest guy i like you know when i played skyrim i spent the most of my time doing all the side quests before i even touched the main story missions you know i i, I that's is as soon as like when the new remake come out and they're talking about their side quests oh guess what i'm gonna be doing the entire time side questing hard it's gonna be great so i'm big on that and that's because i really i learned it from ff7 that that's a thing i was like you know and so it was big for me. It was a really big deal. So when I went back into playing it this time, because when they when they released their official release date was announced back, you know, when they announced it about it back in March, which actually was it was supposed to come out actually yesterday. Yeah, I will say yesterday. But now it's in April. I was like, all right, let me go back. I like I said, I have the guide that I've had for many many years. 
I have it on everything. Like I think I I, I have episode on everything. I have it on my PC. I have it on. I don't have it on my Switch, but I have it on like something else. Uh, one of my PS, one of my Playstations, probably both my four, my four and three. But I was like, I have it. So let me go in. Let's let's follow through the guide. Let's get everything. Let's do it all. Let's do it all. And I did it. I got my golden chocobo. I, I got. I became S rank in the races. I, I did the battle arena. I got. I got Omni Slash. Uh, what was it? What's in the battle arena? Did y'all see? Like, was it W Summon? Um, I did, and when it got Quadra Magic, Magic, I got Knights of the Round. I mean, I went and did everything. Took, got, got Vincent early, got Yuffie. Went and saw the whole thing with him and Lucrezia, so he can get you know Death Penalty, which is his final weapon, and I forget what his final limit break is called. Chaos. You know, I did everybody. I got everybody's stuff. You know, and I fought Ultima Weapon against Cloud's Ultimate. You know, Sword. I did. I did it. You know, the whole thing on the piano for for Tifa. I did it all. I did it all. The only thing I didn't do. The only thing I didn't do was I didn't level cap everybody because that what that grind was. <laughs> that grind was real. I only did Tifa, Cl uh, Cloud, and Vincent. Not Vincent, sorry, uh, Barrett. Because uh, in all honesty, that was my. Those are the people I kind of liked. Anyways, Tifa is life. I don't care. Out of all the Final Fantasy games, outside of like I think like Renoa, Tifa's life. And I'll smack anyone who says anything differently. And I've said it before in a previous episode when the big deal was when they first revealed Tifa for the remake. I was very I was very, very emotional about that because I was like, Tifa is one of my favorite characters. Like I said, I have, I have a pearly bead of her sitting up here on my ceiling. I, I, I was like, I, I hope that she ends up being in Smash Bros. Because I'll, I'll like, she will be my solid main, good or bad. I will play her and be the best ever with her. Uh, put her in Tekken Seven. I'll play. I'll, I'll always become a Tekken master because that's 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 Tifa's life. So I uh, yeah, Cloud Tifa and, and Barrett. That was my team and. Uh, and then this time around, I did. I, I got them all close. Like I think Cloud was for, for sure in his nineties. Tifa and Bear were like in her mid eighties or early eighties. Well, so I got. I didn't. You know, because like I said, that grind is. I mastered most of my materials. All the, all the ones that I used, I mastered a lot of them. Like there's some of the use of little mystify seal and stuff like that. I didn't. I didn't do. But I, I mastered like a bunch of them. And uh, yeah, man, I'm telling you right now. Like I went in and when you go into the last fight. When you fight Genova and then you fight Sephiroth, the, it gets when, <laughs> when you literally uh, this is this is when you use Knights of the Round and W Summon, and then mime it because that's what I did. I didn't like I didn't max out W Summon and I didn't max out Knights of the Round. I got I love them up though, but I did W Summon. I did I did I did Knights of the Round twice on Genova gone. Then Sephiroth I did. Knights of the Round with Cloud, which he did it twice, then I mimed it with Tifa, and she did it two more times. So that's four times Knights of the Round. And then it's like leveled up. It wasn't master, but it was leveled up pretty good. That fight became a joke. I think he hit me one time with with a dem with Demi three, and that was it. As soon as it was done, like Tifa came like came back after the summon, the like fourth the second summon, all you see, foul, lights flat, and you just see stuff all just go I'm like, are you serious? Alright, cause I had um I, when that was done, I was gonna fire up because Barrett had Bahamut Zero on qu with Quadra Magic, the material Quadra would makes you hit do the move four times, and I was gonna have Tifa mime that. So I was like, all right, if this didn't work, I'm about to hit you with some with some Bahamut Zero like eight times. This better, and it did, I didn't even have to. I, he hit me one time. I didn't even have to. That fight was so much of a joke. You don't understand, you guys. When I first did it, I, I'm I'm telling you. I was on my feet the entire time. I couldn't yell. It was like it was like one or two in the morning. I'm having a complete pan you know, panic attack because he's hitting me with supernovas. I'm putting regen on people. I'm running out of like potions. I'm running out of ether. I'm like I'm like I'm trying to get this done. I'm trying to get this done. I'm like oh how am I going to do this? This time around, <laughs> I had everybody. Like I said, everyone's final weapon. I mastered most of the materia. I I literally had it. I like I had stuff. I came in there with stuff ready to go. Man, one two punch Sephiroth down. I got up and laughed. I never laughed so hard in my life <laughs> about how trivial that fight is when you have stuff. When you have the gear, I la I I never felt so. I, I, I almost wanted to call my brother, but it was like, but he was doing stuff. I was just like, it, it was so funny to me how easy that fight was. So I sat there and watched it, you know, and watched the ending and stuff like that and the credits, and it was just, I felt good. I felt good. 
And then I remember watching, and I was, and I remember when, and one of the things you I paid attention to when I played it this time around is the story, because that's one of the big things about Final Fantasy VII is not just the characters, it's the story aspect of it, and and a lot of, and not just about saving the world from Sephiroth and Meteor and stuff like that. It's about what well, the characters. I mean, I think I think what outside of what Kate says, a lot of these characters have been through something. And it's one of the things that I think it focused on, and I remember watching a video years ago about Gerard the Completion he was talking about FF7 because he's like he's he's on that list my short list of people that I'm fans of who are hardcore fans of of FF7 between Caleb Hart Maximilian Dude and Gerard the Completionist those are my guys who are like the hardcore Final Fantasy like guys those are the guys I watch and listen to whenever anything FF7 related pops up um um, but yeah, they like one of the things they I they talked about was while dealing with mental health issues, and when you go back, and especially now, like when I first played it, I didn't it, it didn't click. I was just in it. I was like, man, this game is intense, you know. And then like, and now I come at it now, looking at it, especially with you know my you know I'm only like like I said I'm only like 38. No, I'm only 39. Uh, but I'm technically just turned 30 because I'm minus eight minus eight of my age because I'm black. What, what, what? Nobody's agreeing with me? What? Anyways, that, uh, you understand it more, and that the story is about trauma. You know what I mean? About how everybody deals, like, everybody's trauma, everyone, everybody in life goes through traumatic experiences, and in this story, everybody's traumatic experience is different. Only people who had, who had similar stories was Tifa and Cloud because they're from the same city and that's where Sephiroth was and that's when things went completely belly up. For those who don't know the story, don't worry, when, when Remake comes out in a month, you'll, you'll learn it more. And and they're expanding so much more on it. Stuff I've learned and the, like everything, I'll get, you, you'll, I'll, when I talk about the demo, I'll talk about it then. But, uh, yeah, the, it, the, the fact that everybody in this, in this, in your, that you learned about, that you meet, that's part of your party, your huge party, are like all went through something that's horrible to them, and everybody handled it differently. Uh, like you mean me? Everything that happened with Barrett when he from his hometown, losing losing his best friend, losing his wife, uh, adopting Marlene, it turned him not only into like a more like he's a very like a very abrasive individual, but like super hardcore, like about saving the planet. And, and because of his experience with dealing with Shinra and when they built the the reactor in his city, what it did and stuff like that turned him to a very angry man and very determined to save the planet from Shinra who's trying, who's killing it. And, you know, he essentially became part of the avalanche and was it like he literally an ego terrorist. Do you go to people like, like Sid, who just was very, who's, to him, his experience was like to becoming the first man in space. What well, that was his dream. That was his whole life was about that. And then for it to have it like taken away from him made him angry, a very angry man. And was still and like whenever you found him, where was he at? He was working on the rocket, or you know, or working on his airplane because he was all about that. But like he's he, you know he, how he dealt with it. And even though what happened with him was what's his name? Her name Shara. That like helped him. And that technically was saving his life. It, 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 he, it made him very angry because he lost his chance out on that. And even though he eventually acknowledged that, that how important she was to him, it, it, was, it was covered by a lot of like anger because of, and, and of missing out on a big chance for him. And then you have people like like Vincent, who man, okay, Vin, Vincent is also one of those guys. When you read the when you read the backstory and, and stuff like that, and the stuff he says, he's also one of those characters who got some bad stuff that happened to him. The whole thing with freaking Hojo and Lucrezia and him getting getting shot and then being experimented on. He he all that stuff that happened to him and and, and the whole thing with Seth Roth and stuff put him into like uh, punishing himself. And so to the point where he cut himself off from the world and he just decided he's going to live in a coffin and never be live go, go outside ever again. That was his punishment. That's how he handled his stuff. You know, you have people like Red 13 who's, who, we call him a cat man dog because we technically don't know what he is. Because I like in the game, like, what, are, what is he? He's an Anaki. What, what, is, what, what does that mean? That's just what he is. It's like, oh, oh, oh. 
okay so but like about how his issues about his dad and how he felt his dad abandoned him and because of that he lost his mom you know like how they all you know what i mean it's just there's so many things and then you have like the extremes like everything that happened with cloud about his hometown and sephiroth broke literally broke his psyche broke into the point to where he literally merged his life with a nut with zach who you learn about in this game and then if you play crisis core which is a game that's literally it's a prequel to seven but it's about like zach's life before literally before final fantasy seven and uh and uh just how busted up cloud really was and then how like in in, in connection tifa who experienced the same thing while you know not as jacked up as cloud was pretty messed up too you know and how they both handled it you know what i mean it's just it's very rough and like i think the only person in all honesty who had i think in all, i think all people who had their head on their shoulders the most based and even though they've gone through some stuff and they have to have they suffered loss was in, in all honesty Aerith. She was the only one who was very positive and stuff like that. Now, granted, I've been hearing in this and 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 she's quirky, but I heard in remake that like they're elaborating more on her quirkiness and stuff that she deals with. But the fact that she's very like was very upbeat and very uh, kind and positive and stuff like that, and even like even the fact that she knew what she had to do to help save the world, and she was still okay with it and very positive about it then. And so it was very interesting about how everybody in in this. And the story was dealing with something before the real f battle came into play, where Sephiroth and Meteor and stuff like, and the Geno and Genova and all, you know, all because it, it was never really because while we sit there and say all oh, the bad guys were Shinra, it 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 it, it, it is them, but it's not in, in the whole grand scheme of things. It wasn't about them, and uh, they played a part, but it wasn't about them. And so it's very interesting to see, and even like when you when you go back and you look at like Hojo and Hojo. Like the couple of times you deal with Hojo, and like you, and they, like I think was it, like the, like before the end of disc three, or no, before the end of disc two, you deal with Hojo, and just some of the, some of the stuff he says, you like you learn a lot about him. It's just very interesting about some of these characters and their and how they looked at things and how they dealt with stuff. It was very, you know, some of it was very traumatic, and 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 you can see how it could mess up a person. And so everybody at some point had to um, de had to deal with their trauma in some way, shape, or form. Some of it you you didn't have to do like Vincent. You didn't have to deal with Vincent. That's a side. That's a side quest. Um, technically, the same thing with with. Um, I mean, the whole thing with Red Thirteen, you kind of had to do about his dad. Um, but even like when you go to get his final weapon. There's some stuff you're dealing with his grandfather. So, but like I said, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of deep stuff. Like, everyone kind of like dealing with their own stuff. And the fact that they kind of all kind of had to, like, face their own issues and deal with them before they could even deal with anything big that was bigger than them. Like, fighting Sephiroth and stopping Meteor so you can stop the world from being destroyed. They had, they, 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 you know, you have to, the, the phrase, you got to help yourself before you can help others. And that literally was the situation. And eventually they all kind of have, have come, come, I don't want to say the word come to grips. Uh, Cause that, it's like, it almost feels like you're, have, you're forced. I mean, to a certain degree, some of them were, but I, I think, you know, it helped. What's the word I want to use? They found, they found closure. There it is. They found closure in some of the stuff they dealt with, and they had to be honest with themselves about it. Because eventually, like, Cloud had to be forced to remember and to be honest about what happened. And that the fact that, you know, he, like, he was not part of the soldier. Spoilers for those who've never played it ever. <laughs> you know, things like that. And, and how traumatized. He was by the experience and how he, like I said, like some to a certain degree, like you know, or to the fact that you know, Tifa was very traumatized too. Even like some of her memories about it were like muddled, and they together they kind of you know mess with each other's memories about it. It's it's very interesting how that all pans out. Even like Yuffie, like Yuffie, like you almost consider and say Yuffie's kind of a joke character because he, he kind of is. This little 15 year old kid coming here stealing material it's all about material and getting powerful but when you go to Wu Tai and you see her and you and you, you go through the, the the pagoda or the pagoda 
when she's fighting all the masters and her dad's the final master and you're gonna find out that her big issue is that why she's so determined to become powerful is because like the war that happened in, in Crisis Core with Wu Tai and how they lost and how that affected their country as a whole and their people and how that upset her because she knew the history of her people and they were powerful people and to see them be essentially turned into a tourist attraction it, it hurt her feelings it, it was not something she liked and it, it affected her and it explains why she was so determined to get become more powerful you know things like that it, it's very interesting to see all these things like and like i said like to her that was traumatic you know she was alive her dad was still around we didn't they don't say much about her mom but like that that stuff was tra traumatic for her and that's what affected her as a person and so all, seeing all these things and then being threatened and at that then after that having the threat of possibly losing your chance to make up for that because of meteor and sephiroth it's very it, it's very rough you're like you you know all this stuff you find now you're finally coming to reality about yourself and about your feelings about uh what's happening to you on a personal level now you now you're now you don't have time to fix that because there's a big giant ball of red and scary in the sky and it's potentially coming down and it's going to destroy everybody because um some crazy man who is thought dead is now threatening the world and even to a certain degree uh sephiroth was dealt with some trauma i mean the whole thing with hojo and dr gas and his origins and stuff like that it, it affected him and you can see how it changed how he handled things because if you go if you go back and play crisis core even a little bit of the flashback and i'm hoping that in remake they're going to expound more on the on hit on like the relationship you know cloud and had with sephiroth and how he was before he snapped and you get to kind of see and like crisis core kind of touched on it too like the the change of the he was like he was like the hero everyone like wanted to be sephiroth he was the man and now he became the like the enemy like the number one enemy to the planet you know very interesting to see and to see him change from what he was to what he became i will i look forward to seeing how much more they expand on that um I, I i walked away from this very happy once i fit i i finished i will say i probably i didn't 100 percent. i'll say i 90 percent it maybe 95 after a, a, other a couple of things i didn't do it was like it was only two things i didn't kill ruby and i didn't kill emerald weapon and i didn't level kept everybody so was, I'm, I'm like 95 i got every, i did everything else i did everything else but those two but those things and i walked away very happy uh, like I said, the last fight was trivial with Knights of the Round and, and W Summon, and so I was laughing. I laughed so hard. But um, I, I, I was watching videos and stuff recently about FF7 and like the remake and like the whole thing that Gerard did about the thesis about FF7 and how it affects people to a certain like more than you realize, like the core of it. And like like I said, at, at, at a young age, I would never have got it. As as a 39 year old, we're dealing with someone with with dealing with like health issues uh, dealing with loss myself because i lost family members and dear friends to, to death and me with me fighting things like cancer and stuff like that i and still dealing with health stuff I, and, and you know and other stresses i can see how how important this story is to people because at 17 i, I mean i've been through a little bit of stuff but i wasn't i didn't no, nothing near to what i've dealt with in the last like we'll say 10 years you know you know what i mean um and it's so it's just it's very it's very important to and the story is, was written in such a way to where you like like i said that everybody that was originally part of the group have dealt with something to a, some degree that was traumatic for them and how they helped, dealt with it initially and how eventually they worked through it you know are they are they 100 percent cured no are they better after they work through it yes and so it, it, I think that's what it comes down to, because uh, at the end of the day, you have to be honest with yourself that you, maybe you you have something going on, maybe your pro what your problem is, and and just and work on dealing with it. And like in certain situations, uh, ask for help. Like one of the things, like when you have the whole scene, the whole part of the game where uh, Cloud falls into the live stream with Tifa, and Tifa like was like helping Cloud work his way through his mind to come and to come to grips with what actually happened in nimbleheim nimbleheim nimble nimbleheim with uh 
Sephiroth. And she's like, he's like, well, well, I don't understand. She's like, you know, you you figure it out, and I'll, but I'm right here. You know what I mean? And so it's it was very good. It's, it's stuff like that. So we have to. Sometimes we have to. I mean, at the end of the day, we do have to like help ourselves, but always remember that we do have a support system. And so I think that will also was showing. And then the fact that you have these ragtag of people who literally, honestly, under, under normal circumstances, would have never met each other. On the outside of like Tifa and maybe Cloud, the rest of them probably would have never have met each other. And yet, uh, at the end of it all, they had each other's back. And they helped each other through. And they helped each other through stuff. And so it's always important to have a... a a group of people who are willing to not only support you through whatever the hardships you're dealing with, but who are willing to to uh, fight for you and, and and accept you for the flawed, damaged individual that you are. And so I know I'm, I'm, I'm being really deep for a video game. Yeah, I know, but that's literally what it does. That's what this game did to people. This is what it, you know, what it, you know. Now on the, when I went back and played it again, like for real, for real, and really paid attention, that's what it did to me. That's what I realized when I, by the time I finished it, and like this is what it's about. This is what it's really about. You know what I mean? Because you know you can go in there going like, oh man, it's about them fighting the ultimate evil, then being Shinra, then find out it was Sephiroth and the meteor. Yes, that's true. But the real meat of the story is about these individuals and what they've gone through and how they dealt with it. So, I I I mean I get it. I get it. I understand why people uh, love this game a hundred percent through and through. I get it. Why uh, I watched uh, Caleb Hart forty two like. He PB'd his his his, hunt, his speed run of FF Seven, and he watched the ending, and you see him get emotional about it. I see. I understand why when the remake was announced, people were very happy. I understand why Maximilian, when he met the like the devs and stuff like that, that and how they were inspired to do it, and he was part of the reason why they were inspired to keep going. Why that hit him to to his core and made him very emotional. I get why when people see the video the, the the trailer of final fantasy remake like it's real it's the final fantasy 7 remake and it's real real it's like not like it's not just a hype a hype dream or 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 a, a hope or a rumor or urban legend or like a mythological creature you see it it's tangible it's like you can taste it you see footage why these people were in tears i get it i get it i get it i get it because it represents the video game represents more than just uh, playing video games, and and the storytelling represents a lot more. It, it deals with some real life stuff that people are dealing with to this day, <laughs> and being treated for and need help for to this day. And I get it more, and I get it more now than I ever did when I when I first played it. So. Um, this is my new experience with Final Fantasy VII, the original, and I'm very happy I went back and played it again because it 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 reconfirms why it's one of the greatest uh, RPGs out there, and it, and it, it reconfirms also with me, you know, when it comes to dealing with stuff, things on an emotional level, on a deeper level, and uh, I am very ex excited to play. Uh, the remake and see how deeper they go you know how much more they expand on the concept and the idea of how these people deal with what's what's happening to them uh on a personal level and how the the events are affecting them you know through the story and their interactions with each other and things like that it's going to be it's going to be an experience and i uh, and i'm sure everybody who's a big fan are going to enjoy it uh, for those who don't play those games that's fine but who those who do, I, I, I don't spoil it for nobody. I'll punch you in the mouth. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I've never given a rating for a video game yet. Have I done that? I don't know if I've done that. But we're going to do it now. So with that, that in my head right now, Final Fantasy VII, the original one, and, and they said it the best the other day too. Uh, I think Max said it best. Even with the remake, Going back and playing FF7, the original FF7, is still going to be a wonderful experience, for, especially for what it does. And, and, and for someone like myself, it put me on a path for a lot of things. Um, it was my, like I say, it was my first JRPG ever. And because of that game, I was hungry for, I, I, was, I was hungry for a good story, I was hungry for cool characters, I was hungry for that experience again. So I played games like Star Ocean, The Second Story, Legend of Dragoon, Legend of Gaia. I mean, we're talking about, I've played almost every Final Fantasy game that came out. 
I was I was very determined to live the life of these RPGs. I became a big that's why I was a fan of like Knights of the Old Republic. I was a big fan of the Mass Effect franchise. I was I mean you don't understand. There are so many reasons it's because of I'm so big on characters, I'm so big on story, I'm so big on the on these experiences of these RPGs like that, that can give me the love of these characters and 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 play it over and over again and and just just enjoy it for what it is. And 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 if it can, can teach me something at the end of it all even more so. Not very many games can do that anymore. Can teach you something about yourself or, or help you grow as an individual because, you know, some these ga these days, these days these games these games don't exist. Not all the time. Not every time. Uh, games like Final Fantasy 7, even like like even like when you go like after that, FF8 did did a pretty good job with that. Um uh what else? What which one else did? 10 did a pretty good job with it. 13, not so much. 12, eh, you know what I mean? 15, you know, it did, it did, but nothing that hits you to the core like seven. And I and I see that and I hope other people do too. And I hope for those, if if, if the remake's your first time playing it, you're, you're gonna be in for a treat because it's it looks like it's gonna be, uh, for I played the demo and everything else I've heard and read, it's going to be fantastical. But if you need to go and play, I think you should go and play, in all honesty, the original. Uh, you got time. We got a month before we have to, before the remake comes out. And even if you don't, go back and play the, the original one because it's still a good time and it's still worth the energy and the effort because it's an, like I said, it's an experience you should, you should have. You should always have. So, once again, let's go back to it. As the House of Dragon, we're going to look at Final Fantasy VII, the original. I would give this game a solid 10 out of 10 because it does everything you want in the game. It, it, it gives you, like I said, like it, gives, it was my first experience of dealing with characters up to this level. They, they, they're, you know, RPG elements, the materia. I mean, the fact there's like there's a whole there's a whole like strategy with the materia. The fact there's all these side things you can do. Uh, the the characters, some of the bosses you fight, they're they're crazy. The experiences are awesome. Um, the like the story itself, the characters themselves. Like I said, Tifa for life. It's all worth it. At the end of it all, playing it all the way through and getting everything and doing everything is actually worth it. It's very much worth it. And I appreciate being able to experience something like that again. Because like I said, I've played through it before, but I never played through it like like my brother did. I never did it like that. And I'm very glad that I did. And um, so I hope you guys do too, if you play it. If you if not, experience it through somebody else's eyes. Because even watch even watching somebody else play it and seeing them experience it is just as rewarding as well. So that's me. That's uh, the House of Darkness for Final Fantasy VII the original. Um, hope you guys like it. I know this is a different one than I would typically do. Usually I'm doing movies or TV shows or animated something. But this, I think this this conversation about Final Fantasy VII is kind of a, it's a big fail, deal. Big deal. I'm like having. I'm like, I don't know why I'm doing that, but it's a big deal for me. Uh, maybe not as much as some other people, but it did. It's definitely playing it again. I get it more so now than I did before. I enjoyed it a lot before. Oh man, the anything about a Buster Sword, the whole the whole thing about anytime you see that Buster Sword, I like lost my mind. You know what I mean? Because like, we knew what it represented. Anytime you heard like the victory music from Final Fantasy VII, I lost my mind. The battle music, every, you know what I mean? It's just there's everything about you know. As a fan, I get it, but you know, as a person, I I appreciate it that much more. So I hope you guys do too. Like I said, this is and I know this is a different kind of thing, but I, I I hope to be able to do something like this again with other stuff. Maybe I'll go revisit the Mass Effect games and do the same thing because I do love Mass Effect. I love it for everything about it. You know what I mean? You know, I, I like the games. I like the characters. Uh, Garrus is, is one of those cool guys. Garrus was my boy or is my boy in like one and did I put him play him in three? Was he in my group in three? I felt like he was in my group in three. Uh, when I got him, he was my groove in three, I think. I feel like it. But anyways, uh, we'll see. Well, then tell me what you think. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what you appreciate about Final Fantasy VII, if that was your first RPG, or if that, if that was your first Final Fantasy experience, because that was mine. That was my first. 
You know, I know there's people who play like the originals and then everything before that. You know, I know the numbering system's weird between Japan and and the U.S. But uh, if that wasn't your first Final Fantasy game, what was your first Final Fantasy game, and why did you love it? What's what's the one that hit you right in the chest? Like, I, I so what was it? What was it? You know, I was always a big Final Fantasy VIII guy, and I played that. I went back and completed that one. Or um, I almost completed it all. But that, that stupid card game makes me mad. Um, I want to say four or five months ago? It was, it was last year. It was like tail end of last year. And I liked it. Story's a little, it's a little weird. But I liked it. I thought it was great. Uh, but I will, say, I will say now that I've replayed 7... I understand why Seven's everybody's favorite, and it is pushing me to me for it to be my favorite. I still like I like I like Squall, I like and 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 the Gunblade, and I like Renoa. But Tifa's still life. I don't give a care. Tifa's still life. Um, but if I if I was gonna have a brooding uh, emo main protagonist, Squall will be my boy. I love Cloud, but Squall will be my boy. But Tifa for life. But I definitely for sure FF Seven is 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 right up there with everything i like so let me know what you like say once again let me know what you think let me know how you feel i appreciate you guys for watching my video i appreciate you guys for listening to my podcast and i'll get on um uh, maybe we'll play like i said we'll 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 talk we'll definitely talk about it again after the remake comes out and then we'll talk we'll discuss and get deep about that as well all right this is house of dark and real talk and i'll talk to you guys soon be nice to each other and don't steal other people's materia that is horrible don't do that